Hi everybody, I'm Olivier Maas, I'm co-founder of Basro, and today I'm here with Ram Lipius, my co-founder and CEO, and we're super excited to announce the release of Basro 2.0 today. So let's dive into it, uh, Bram, and uh, tell us about what we can expect. Yeah, I'm very excited to launch Base for 2.0 uh, today. Maybe it's good to just start with a use case. Olivier, you're working a lot with customers and users. What is a common use case that you see? Yes, great idea. Um, one of the main industries that we have um, traction in is uh, the manufacturing industry. And uh, what we see with manufacturing companies is that they have multiple sites. They have equipment on all these sites. They have equipment that uh, goes missing. They have maybe maintenance issues. They need to collect and open tickets when something is happening. Then there needs to be a process flow for even, you know, uh, it's either reporting a theft or it's to schedule a maintenance or a replacement of a spare part, right? So very common. So how would you do this in the new base for 2.0 if, uh, if I'm a new customer with that use case coming to you? perfect way to do this is with Kuma, our new AI assistant. It's a conversational assistant where you can just talk to in human language, uh, in English or whatever language you prefer. And you can just describe what kind of problem you would like to solve. And Kuma can solve that directly for you in Basefro. So it yes. would build either a database, uh, it could build an application, uh, it can solve it directly for you. Um, so maybe just to take the use case that you described, I've prepared a prompt for it. Um, I'm going to describe in human language that uh, we're managing multiple manufacturing sites with a lot of equipment, that things can break or things get stolen. And let's see what Kuma will build for us. So I'm asking Kuma this prompt now. Uh, it has already started with designing a new database for us. Um, and what you can see here is Kuma is building the tables, it is adding the fields, it is doing everything yeah, that you would normally do in the tool, only then the AI assistant will do it directly for you. Um, so what you can see here is Kuma has already built uh, the sites table, for example. It has built an equipment table, it has built like a, an issues table, for example, where you can report issues into. That looks pretty neat. So what happens if I want to add specific fields in the database? If I see that some information is missing, do I have to prompt Kuma every time or can I go directly into the database that has been built and then start adding uh, columns, for instance, or records myself? How does it actually work? Ah, this is a powerful thing about like a, a no-code tool in combination with a powerful AI assistant. Everything that you can do in the tool, the AI assistant can do that for you. But if you want to, you can also finish something manually. So if you think like, oh, a certain field is missing in the table, you can always create that yourself. But you can also ask Kuma to create it for you um, if you want to. So if you think like, oh, a, sp a specific uh, formula is missing, you can just ask Kuma to build it for you okay. and it will do it. Amazing. So now let's say you have all that data structure, basically. So the first thing Kuma built is the database structure. And now I need something for the worker to report an issue. So say a worker works the manufacturing floor, sees a piece of equipment missing or has a defect piece of equipment, needs to, to open a ticket for maintenance. Can Kuma start building a, a form, for instance, or specific views in the data? Yeah, definitely. So you would want to have like a form in the issues table. In base row, if you have a form, uh, if a form is submitted, it would create a new row for you. Uh, so what we could ask Kuma is, can you create a form when an issue uh, or a form that a worker can submit when there is a new issue, for example? Um, so now, because we're already looking at the issues table, Kuma will get all the context of the table and it can create that form directly for us. Uh, so what we can see here is in this form, it has, it's, it's named like a, a report new issue form view. Um, we would add all the fields to it. Um, so the worker can set like a title. It can choose which issue equipment it's related to, who has reported it, what the description is, uh, the priority, which side, like all the information you would need, uh, it will be collected by the uh, by the form in this case and when, it, and when it's submitted it would create like a new row directly in that table and this form can uh, can also be amended so if i want to add a bit of design or it needs to have the logo of my company or it needs to be so all all of that i can still add manually or or i can ask kuma is that correct definitely yeah you can ask kuma to upload the logo for you but you can also do it manually when uh, by just using the no code interface that right. i have okay so we got the data we've got the form to put the data in now, 
with there's another piece missing, which is then what happens when a worker has submitted an incident, right, or a, a ticket. Then you need an automation or a process somehow. So is there anything in Baso 2.0 that can address that? Definitely. We're also launching the automations in Base Row. Um, so in the left sidebar, you can click on Create New. You can click on Automation. And maybe we're going to call this one uh, Report Issues, for example. All right. We would add the automation and it would add uh, the workflow to the automation as well. In this case, what I would like to show you is, for example, when a new issue is created, uh, we want to check uh, what the priority is, what the status is of that issue. And depending on the description, we're going to use AI to actually either send an email to the manager of the site if something important has happened. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose an event, which is when a row is created. Um, this is something that Kuma can build for you, by the way, as well. But I want to show you how the automation feature works. Uh, so we are going to do it manually. Okay. The first step is when a row is created. In the right sidebar, I'm going to choose when a row is created in the issues table. Um, I would need to click on the test events here. And then I would briefly fill out this form just so that the automation can recognize what happens when a new issue is created. So basically, I'm the worker. I fill in the form. I notice, for instance, a piece of equipment is missing. I report that incident. It creates a row in base row in the database, and then it triggers the start of a process in the automation. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, here I'm saying the issue title is missing equipment, for example. It's about the generator. I'm going to say we arrived on site, but the generator was missing um, the priority is very high because we need this generator it was at the alpha site for example it was reported today so i'm going to choose today is a date this morning the status is open because it hasn't been resolved yet um, and i'm going to yeah submit this form and that would basically create a row in this table directly so we just see the missing equipment here yeah if I now go back to the automation, you can see that the automation has successfully received the event when the row was created. What I want to do as like a next step is I want to see, uh, I'm going to add like the router node here. So can you explain what a router node actually is? Yeah, definitely. So a router node has certain branches and a branch can have a condition. So what we can do, for example, here is this router checks if the status is open, for example. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add like a condition. I'm going to check the is open formula, for example. I'm just going to call this one is open. I'm going to call the branch open. And then if the issue is, if the status of the issue is open, then we're actually going to follow this path on the left here. Yeah. yeah. And if we follow that path, uh, what I would like to do is maybe check using the, an AI agent to figure out whether the description is related to theft, because if it's related to theft, then a manager of the construction site must immediately look into this. Yeah. So, so basically, you can ask an AI agent based on this, the description of the incident in the form, whether to categorize it basically as a theft or as a spare part slash maintenance incident, which have two different processes to follow. One, it might be a case whereby investigation needs to happen. It needs to inform the plant manager. The other case is basically maybe finding the most suitable supplier for a replacement spare part or who is available the fastest in order to go and to do the maintenance, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Like the manager on site needs to be notified immediately. And so it's very difficult because the construction workers, they, or the manufacturing workers, they might not classify it the right way. So we're going to use AI to classify it as whether it's theft or not. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose an AI provider. In this case, I'm going to use OpenAI. I'm going to use GPT-5 uh, mini, and I'm going to construct a prompt here. Uh, because of how the automations work, we can construct a dynamic prompt, for example. So what we can do here is this description related to theft. And then I'm going to use the description of the issue that uh, the manufacturing worker has provided here. So I'm going to add the description. What I want to do is I want to have some, some choices. So I first need to run this as a test here, by the way, so that we can go to the next step. Uh, I'm going to set some, some choices. So that could either be yes, or that could be no, because we just wanted to classify it as yes or no. I'm going to run this as a test event, and this should be classified as yes, because we uh, added the description that was related to the generator was missing. Yeah, that makes sense. So what we can see here, the AI agent has classified it as yes. 
I want to add like another router node here because if that value is equals to yes, then we want to send an email, for example. Yeah, I'm going to call this if yes. I'm going to set the label to yes. And then I'm going to take the output of the AI agent. If that's equal to yes, then we're going to use that. So now that we have that if statement there, what we could do is uh, send an email, uh, for example. Uh, so I would say... So this would be, for instance, uh, an urgent email sending to the, the plant manager and say, look, uh, we, we think we have a theft case. So um, that triggers a, a specific set of actions that need to be taken by the plant manager. Okay, that, that's, totally, that's totally clear. So what we've seen here, so basically the AI assistant Kuma is able to help you build the database, build the, the, the workflow and the automations. It will be able to build the application. Uh, build graphs and dashboards. So that's your AI assistant. But the AI assistant also is able to build an AI agent or multiple AI agents within base tool, right? So the AI agents actually perform a certain set of actions. So in this case, your AI agent is actually classifying a data submission into two categories. Is it theft or is it maintenance? Can you give me some examples of what other AI agents might be in this specific use case that could be very useful and we could build in base tool? Yeah, definitely. We could, for example, check maybe if an issue has already been reported before. Mm -hmm. um, so we could build an automation that checks, hey, does a similar issue, maybe, maybe another worker has already reported the same issue. Uh, so that's something we could uh, automatically check. Uh, maybe something if equipment runs low, for example. So if uh, something is being used uh, on a site and we don't have anything else available anymore, uh, we could check um, online or in our database whether uh, we can order that equipment for replacement, or, uh, for, replacement for example. So yeah, there's, there's many things you can solve in a scenario like this. Okay. And all these AI agents are built directly in the automation builder. Yeah, it's like um, you can build it yourself or you let Kuma build it for you. Yeah, exactly. This is something that's really powerful uh, because you can use like the AI assistant to build an AI agent for you using the automations. I love that. I love that. This is amazing. As a, uh, having lived through base for the last couple of years and seeing how intuitive and powerful this is. Basically, you can start really talking to base row, talking to your data, get things built, search the data, search data from outside base row, bring it back into base. So, so this actually makes the learning curve of a tool like this really, really low, right? And really, really fast. Now, besides the automations, besides the AI assistant, are there any other features that you want to highlight for the base for 2.0 launch? Yeah, so this launch is packed with many new features. One of the things we also have is workspace level search. In the left sidebar, you can just click on search, type a search query, and it will search in all the rows, all the tables, all the databases that you would have in your workspace. So it's very easy if you have like a big workspace with a lot of data in there. We've also made base from more secure with two-factor authentication. You can very easily set that up, uh, scan a QR code, and then have like two-factor authentication to, to sign into your account. We have date dependencies as well. Uh, with the date dependencies, you could have a table with a start date, an end date, and a relationship between tables. So this is like uh, similar to Gantt use, right? So basically it's a timeline, so it's more for project management use cases, whereby you see the dependencies between different tracks of a project. and if Something is delayed on one track. What's the impact on potential other tracks of the project? Correct. Exactly. Excellent. If the ending date uh, changes, it could impact the starting date yeah. of uh, other rows, for example. Okay. Very clear. Also very relevant in manufacturing, indeed. Um, something else? On top of that, we also have AI field improvements. Um, so it's now also going to be possible to automatically update the cell of an AI field. So if you change uh, certain values in a row and you have an AI field depending on that, it would automatically update those. Yeah. And it's also possible to regenerate all the cell values of an AI field uh, from a specific view or a table. So you can uh, make that happen in bulk if you want to. Amazing. This looks like, I think it's one of the most impressive release. So if you also like what you've seen today, it's available as of today, both on cloud and on self-hosted as usual. Try it for free. Go to baseflow.io and uh, very curious to see what you will be building. Thank you for watching.